Kirby, our favorite pink puffball in real life created by none other than Masahiro Sakurai, goes back to the mysterious godlike entity called Void. And depending on the mood it created positive or negative replicas, there are also the Ancients and their two scientific and magical factions, conflicts, and knights serving them until Galacta Knight was sealed after sealing Void Termina. So please like the video and subscribe. With that out of the way, let's head down to Planet Popstar and this simplified timeline. One night, under the cover of darkness, the gluttonous King DDD and his minions stole all the food in Dreamland, as well as the sparkling stars used to obtain more food. The next morning, as the residents were coping with this crime, Kirby, a young resident of Dreamland, volunteered to retrieve the food and stars and stop DDD. After a tireless journey across Dreamland, Kirby located, challenged, and defeated King DDD's minions using his inhalation and floating abilities along the way. After a long struggle across the Dreamland, Kirby finally reached DDD's castle and faced the giant penguin in a final showdown. After a dramatic battle, Kirby launched its final blast and sent DDD out of the castle. With the help of the Sparkle Stars, Kirby then transformed into a giant balloon to lift the castle high up into the air and spread the stolen food back to the inhabitants across the land. After this first skirmish between the future friends, they would duke one more time as the king wanted revenge. By doing pretty much the same things as in his first attack, naturally also failing despite using stronger armor and strength for his minions and a special metal mask by himself. This defeat taught DDD a proper lesson, and from this point on, the two gluttons would become friends. Thus, Meta Knight decided to end the easy life of Popstar with his Halberd crew, but sadly for them, Kirby learned of the plot and stormed the Flying Fortress. A timer was in place to stop the Pink Puff Ball, but this one and the bosses on the Halberd were not enough. Even so, Meta Knight showed his class by granting Kirby a sword and with it inviting him to a duel. Meta Knight survived, but the halberd crashed into the water. Curb taught the knight a lesson, and from now on he would no longer challenge the god of Popstar, unless under possession or preventing Kirby from causing unaware harm to good. High above Dreamland, there was a sacred fountain known as the Fountain of Dreams, which collected the hopes and dreams of every living thing on planet Popstar, and in turn provided restful sleep to the residents of the world. Sometime after the first struggle against King DDD, after waking up from an after-lunch nap without having any dreams, Kirby went to the fountain to find out what's going on. Upon doing so, he discovered that King DDD was at it again and had stolen the legendary Star Rod, the source of the fountain's power, and broke it into seven pieces. DDD then handed the six fragments to his allies, Wispy Woods, Paint Roller, Mr. Shine, and Mr. Bright, Cracko, Heavy Mole, and Meta Knight, while keeping one of the pieces for himself. Without the Star Rod, all of the inhabitants of Dreamland became more and more tired and irritable. Thinking that this was King DDD's doing, Kirby decided to track down the fragments of the Star Rod and restore everyone's dreams. Kirby once again defeated King DDD and restored Star Rod, placed the rod back into the fountain while ignoring King DDD's protests. Nevertheless, this time, the king had a reason to warn Kirby, as in the moment Kirby placed the rod back in its place, an ominous black ambience filled the sky and emerged from the fountain. After all, it turned out that King DDD was doing his part in protecting the Fountain of Dreams from an evil entity known as Nightmare, who had corrupted the fountain. The unshackled Nightmare flew off into space, but rather than allowing him to escape, King DDD called an unexpected temporary truce with Kirby inhaling him and the Star Rod and launching into the air towards Nightmare. Eventually, Kirby was able to tap into the Star Rod's power and used it to conquer Nightmare. With Nightmare defeated, Kirby returned the Star Rod to its proper resting place on top of the Fountain of Dreams and brought balance to the Dreamland once again. Not long after the incident at the Fountain of Dreams, Kirby took part in a run, the Gourmet Race against King DDD. A glutton's wet dream of stuffing as much food as possible, minus the running part to burn off the calories, obviously. Either way, 
Kirby won the race in the first instance of friendly competitive rivalry between the two. Just as Kirby returned to the Fountain of Dreams, the Star Rod shot a bright beam into the sky, revealing that the sun and moon were fighting, turning night into day, day into night, and so on. In that very moment, Marx, the jester, came bouncing on his beach ball and asked Kirby to get together with the giant comet Nova so it could halt the fight. Kirby granted this request and upon summoning Nova made his wish, but before this one could be turned into action, Marx showed his true self. Knocking away Kirby and dropping his own wish of dominating Planet Popstar, this wish is granted as Marx transformed into a terrifying monster also made it into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, all thanks to Sakurai. Anyway, Mark stood behind the duel between day and night, and with it Kirby was forced to enter the Nova and destroy its core. Setting the stage for the battle on the moon, which ended with Marks being sent flying with Nova, apparently destroying them both. Though not certainly, as there are signs that Marks might return in the future with a new Nova. Marks was terrifying but he paled in comparison to Kirby's next foe, or perhaps even Alter Ego. A force known as Dark Matter stole the rainbow bridges that tie the seven rainbow islands together, possessed King Dedede, and slowly took over Dreamland. To face this evil, Kirby set out on a journey to defeat Dark Matter, and along the way befriended three animals, Rick the Hamster, Koo the Owl, and Kine the Ocean Sunfish. After traveling through seven different islands and defeating their respective bosses, Kirby reached the possessed King Dedede and overpowered him. With all seven rainbow drops from each island, Kirby then formed the Rainbow Sword and exercised Dark Matter from Dedede. Holding the mystic object, Kirby followed Dark Matter for a final showdown. Dark Matter was defeated and Kirby rode the sword down to safety and then used it to create a new rainbow, thus restoring peace to Dreamland. One day, while Kirby and Gooey, a black blob with a pair of eyes and a mouth, were fishing, Dark Matter appeared again and destroyed the planet's rings. Filled with hate and lust for revenge, Dark Matter ran rampant and possessed various inhabitants of the Dreamland and its rulers, including King Dedede. Seeing this, Kirby and Gooey soon teamed up with their pals Rick, Koo, and Kine, along with Pitch the Bird, Choo Choo the Octopus, and Nago the Cat. After visiting each land and confronting the five rulers, Kirby made his way to confront DDD. After a short battle, the possessed king fell. Dark Matter then emerged and once again flew into the atmosphere to escape with Kirby in hot pursuit. After a climactic battle with Dark Matter, the true evil leader that was Zero emerged, leading to a long and decisive battle. Zero, the evil leader, cornered and out of desperation, gouged out his eye in a final move to defeat the pink ball, but it was for naught. Darkness was destroyed, and Kirby floated back down to Dreamland, where peace was restored. After being defeated by Kirby, Dark Matter set its sights on the planet Ripple Star, home of the fairies, to grant himself power from the Great Crystal. To his dismay, a single fairy named Ribbon escaped from her home with their sacred treasure infuriated to hunt down Ribbon and claim the Great Crystal, which upon a brief confrontation was shattered throughout the galaxy and sent Ribbon falling onto Kirby's home planet, Popstar. Upon Ribbon's landing, Kirby located one of the shards and agreed to help retrieve the rest of the crystal shards to save Ripple Star from Dark Matter's control. Along the way, Kirby and Ribbon encountered Waddle Dee, Adeline, and King DDD, who each had found a crystal shard. Seeing this, Dark Matter attacked and possessed each one of them, but Kirby, relentless and fearless as he was, freed them from being Dark Matter's servants. Kirby and the group restored the crystal and reached Ripple Star, where they purged the planet and its queen of Dark Matter's influence using the restored crystal. However, in what seemed to be another moment of defeat, Dark Matter turned the table by using the possessed Fairy Queen to form a new planet, Dark Star. Not willing to waste any time, Kirby and Ribbon departed to confront and defeat Zero-2, the revived form of Zero. Using the crystal and flight from Ribbon, Kirby was able to shoot down Zero-2 without being hit and obliterate Dark Star. The victorious team returned safely to Ripple Star and were hailed as heroes for saving the residents of Ripple Star and the universe. 
High above the skies of dreamland, there was a mirror world. A world where any wish that is reflected in the mirror will come true. One day, the mirror was possessed by a mysterious force and began copying evil minds, thus rapidly turned this world evil. The courageous Meta Knight noticed this and flew into the mirror world to protect Dreamland and figure out what was causing the changes to the mirror. Meanwhile, Kirby was ambushed by Meta Knight's dark persona and ended up being sliced into four different color Kirbys. Angered, they set out to hunt down Dark Meta Knight on a warp star to enter the mirror world. After a little traversing through the mirror world, Kirby noticed two Meta Knights fighting each other. Unfortunately, despite his courage, the noble Meta Knight was defeated by his evil doppelganger and sent into a second mirror, which was then cut into eight fragments by Dark Meta Knight. Dark Meta Knight then scattered the fragments across the mirror world. Didn't take long for Kirby to realize that the mirror of the mirror world had created a dark version of himself that serves Dark Meta Knight. Seeing these multiple threats, the different Kirbys decided to split up and collect the mirror pieces. After collecting all eight mirror fragments, Kirby entered the now restored mirror and initiated a battle with Dark Meta Knight. Upon his defeat, a vortex appeared and sucked Kirby in. Meta Knight, who just witnessed the battle, threw his sword to support Kirby in his fight against Dark Mind, the true mastermind behind the Mirror World's corruption. Dark Mind's dream of conquering the Mirror World was shattered and peace returned. Shadow Kirby, who was thought to be Dark Meta Knight's ally, waves his goodbyes to the four Kirbys as they left the Mirror World one by one through the original Mirror Door. Next, we have Canvas Curse and Mass Attack, which don't have the same impact on the storyline as the next key entry point. As Kirby was about to enjoy a snack, I mean a strawberry shortcake, it suddenly vanished. It seemed as King DDD had done it again. But not this time, instead a gang of thieving rodents, the Squeak Squad, had been unfortunate enough to cross paths with Kirby. An adventure that would bring in Meta Knight and a chase after a treasure chest which Kirby thought contained the lost cake. Naturally, the two duked it out, but just as previously Meta Knight fought for a good cause as after the leader of the Squeak Squad opened it, it turned out to contain a dark cloud. Kirby chased after the now dark Daroach and defeated him, but the cloud did not dissolve, instead transforming into its true form, Dark Nebula, the ruler of the underworld and a specimen of dark matter, and with it the two zeros. Kirby destroyed Dark Nebula, and realizing their mistake, the Squeaks returned the strawberry shortcake, and in return, Kirby repaid the squad for their remorse. On a typical sunny day in Dreamland, Kirby and the gang were fooling around when out of nowhere a spaceship appeared and broke apart while entering Popstar, which prompted Kirby and his friends to run over and see if everyone aboard was alright. They entered the ship and encountered a frantic extraterrestrial called Magalore. After learning that his ship separated into many parts across the land, Magalore offered the group a trip to his beloved homeworld of Halkandra should they help gather the missing parts and help fix his ship. Kirby was quick to accept the proposal, and his friends set off to recover the five lost pieces of his ship across the planet. After the gang retrieved all five pieces, they flew to Halkandra, just as Megalore promised. On their flight, they were suddenly attacked and struck down by a beastly four-headed dragon named Landia. As usual, with no hesitation, our heroes ran off to defeat the four-headed beast. After Landia was defeated, the crown on the top of his head fell off, and Megalore revealed his true motive was to steal the Master Crown back, as it was constructed by the ancestors of his race as a source of limitless power. Once he placed it on his head, he became all-powerful, with the intent of making the entire universe bow before him, beginning with Popstar for helping in his ploy. Megalore then opened up a wormhole and made his way to the group's home planet. Kirby and his friends were in utter shock by this betrayal. Landia, the former four-headed dragon who was now split into four dragons separately, picked up Kirby and his friends and chased down the demonic king through the interdimensional portal. Once the group caught up to Megalore, Kirby quickly confronted and defeated him. To Kirby's surprise, the Megalore's crown was staying afloat and it was revealed that his soul had become one with the crown. As a result, Kirby was forced to confront Megalore in a second and final battle. With some quick thinking, he managed to destroy the Master Crown for good, taking Megalore's soul with it. With Megalore destroyed, 
the wormhole began to crumble and Kirby and his friends fled back through to their home planet. Following the rumors that a sorcerer was traveling around Dreamland turning people into yarn, our hero Kirby noticed a Maxi M tomato, his favorite food, sitting on top of a bush. Without thinking about how peculiar this tomato was with its oddly italic M and yarn-like skin, Kirby attempted to devour the tomato as fast as he could. Unknown to Kirby, the tomato belonged to the sorcerer the inhabitants of Dreamland were warning about. Clueless to this fact, Kirby was banished by the sorcerer to Patchland, a world made entirely of fabric. With it, our hero was transformed into yarn. Shortly upon arrival in Patchland, Kirby noticed a yarn monster chasing a defenseless boy. Kirby immediately set out to help and attempted to suck up the monster, but to no avail, as his new yarn body wouldn't allow him to do so as the air just went right through him. Instead, he randomly transformed into a car and drove away from the monster with the boy on the roof. The boy, who soon explained that he was Prince Fluff and that the sorcerer Yin Yarn had ripped Patchland into seven pieces after removing the magic yarn that held the land together. Kirby, more than happy to help, joined forces with the prince to recover all the magic yarn and take down Yin Yarn. Meanwhile, back in Dreamland, Yin Yarn captured King Dedede and Meta Knight and began transforming Dreamland into patches and stitching until all seemed to be lost to Yin Yarn. Along their journey, Kirby and Prince Fluff were forced to fight Yarn King DDD and Meta Knight, who were both under the control of Yin Yarn. Kirby defeated both DDD and Meta Knight, breaking the spell they were under. Once freed, Meta Knight and DDD joined Kirby and Prince Fluff to string the world back together and inform the two that Yin Yarn was turning Dreamland into fabric. Kirby was frustrated as he couldn't see any way back to Dreamland to save it. Learning about this, Prince Fluff revealed to Kirby that he has the opposite sock to the one Yin Yarn used to bring him to Patchland. Kirby took no hesitation and traveled back to Dreamland to confront the sorcerer. Infuriated with Kirby's escape, Yin Yarn summoned various woolly creatures such as a dragon, octopus, and giant waddle dees to take down our hero. Despite all these foes, Kirby and Prince managed to pierce through, defeat Yin Yarn, break the spell cast on Dreamland, and restore himself and Dreamland back to normal. Oh, this was not the last of Kirby's adventures in a different form, as a hole opened up which drained the colors of Popstar. As if that wasn't enough, Eileen, the paintbrush, fell down and together they began recoloring the world. On the path, Eileen revealed that her friend Clacia had turned evil and drained Popstar of its color and asked them to bring her down in Seventopia. There it turned out that Clacia had been possessed by the Dark Crafter, which his only aim was to drain all of the color in a specific place. Kirby dealt with this threat and with it everyone could return back and recolor Popstar. Grateful for Kirby's help, Clacia and Eileen made a bushel of apples for the pink puffball to enjoy. After a long day of fishing, flying, and relaxing, Kirby set off to bed to recharge for the next day. That night, a beanstalk started to grow under Dreamland and carried various buildings, including Kirby's house and King Dedede's castle, into the sky. When Kirby woke up the next morning, almost falling to his demise, he found himself in the land of Floralia, located high in the skies above Dreamland. Kirby then climbed his way up to Dedede's castle and finds that the culprit behind the dream stop is a six-armed spider-like being named Taranza, and witnessed his power as he captured DDD and trapped him in a prism made of light. Taranza fled with DDD in tow, and Kirby ascended the dream stock to set things right in Dreamland. After an intense fight, Kirby was able to knock out King DDD and free him of another brainwashing. Taranza then revealed that he had been working for Floralia's queen, the bee wasp being. Queen Sectonia. He also revealed that the Floralians planted the Dreamstock in the hopes of summoning Dreamland's hero to their aid. Queen Sectonia appeared just to punish Taranza for his failure of finding the wrong hero and blasted him from the tower and turned her attention to Kirby. After several skirmishes, Kirby, aided by King Dedede and a remorseful Taranza, managed to defeat the Mad Queen, incinerate her and the vines around Planet Popstar in the process. One day, while playing chess and napping, a massive UFO called the Access Ark, filled with robotic invaders, sneaked up and 
rapidly mechanize their home planet, Popstar. Seeing this, King Dedede and Meta Knight launched an offensive against the robotic extraterrestrials, but the cannons from Castle Dedede and Meta Knight's airship, Halberdare, were both easily overpowered by the invaders. Kirby, who slept through the entire battle, awoke from his nap, was curious of what was going on, and raced off to check out a brand new base that extended into the clouds. There he was faced by a mech which stood no chance against Kirby and plummeted into the ground. Being the curious creature that he is, Kirby jumped into the mech armor which transformed itself to suit Kirby's strengths and powers. Kirby started destroying the five bases across the corners of Planet Popstar that serve as the Axis Arc's landing legs. Along the way, Kirby encounters Susie, an alien secretary that works for the Haltman Works Company. She claimed to be gathering natural resources from the planet's ecosystems for her boss. Kirby defeated her and Susie fled on a drone. After Kirby destroyed the last of the five landing legs, Kirby enters the space station and he meets the president and CEO of Haltman Works Corporation, Max Prophet Haltman. President Haltman fired Susie for all her numerous failed attempts to defeat Kirby. The president claimed he must follow his supercomputer's business plan calls out his mech and challenges Kirby to a duel. Furious that he lost to what he called a wild savage, Haltman activates his computer Star Dream, who was stopped by his vengeful ex-employee Susie. Star Dream became self-aware and attacked her, took over the president's body and comes sentient. Star Dream said, Unfortunately, you imperfect, fragile life forms were a liability, so you are invited to witness the end of history. Enjoy your destruction! The self-aware Star Dream lifted up into space, leaving Kirby and Susie behind. Meta Knight returns with his repaired halberd and fuses it with Kirby's Robobot armor. The newly formed machine takes off into space to take down the supercomputer. Kirby and his mech halberd disable Star Dream and sends it down to collide with the Access Arc. The AI takes control of the enormous spaceship, transforming it into a mechanical planet and brings the fight back to Kirby. With the Ark's armor destroyed, Star Dream shot out an energy beam and landed a critical hit on the Halberd mech. Kirby ejects himself from the fusion and drills right through Star Dream, causing him to explode. The unconscious Kirby drifted back down to Planet Popstar and left his mech floating away in space. With the destruction of the computer, Popstar reverted back to its natural state. And once again, peace was returned to Dreamland. In the furthest reaches of outer space, on a planet called Jum Bastion, a dark heart-shaped crystal exploded into tiny fragments, all landing on the planet Popstar. These crystal fragments, known as Jumba Hearts, corrupted all those who went near it, including the likes of King Dedede and Meta Knight. Kirby, however, did not get negatively affected by said crystal and instead adopted a power that turned his foes into his friends. After getting hit by the heart, he noticed a flock of Waddle Dees bringing food to King Dedede's castle. Kirby and his new friends decided to investigate the matter and found the king eating the rest of the kingdom's food, somehow accumulating a ridiculous amount of mass. Kirby and his star allies defeated the king and then met a knight. All of a sudden, a large Jamba Ford appeared on the planet, causing Kirby's team to defeat the fortress's generals. Francisca, Flamberger, and Zan. They encountered the head honcho, Lord Hainus, and engaged in a battle between him and the three generals. The villains then sacrificed themselves to unleash the power of the powerful being, the Void Termina. Kirby and the friends then jumped on the Star Ally Sparkler, engaging in a final battle of epic proportions. Now with the Void Termina destroyed and the Planet Pop Star safe, Kirby and his newfound allies used a Warp Star to return safely home. Kirby and the inhabitants of Pop Star were enjoying the peace as an interdimensional void opened, sucking in all of the planet's inhabitants, including Kirby, who woke up on the shores of a forgotten land. Unsure of what to do, Kirby set out and encountered unfriendly animals that were imprisoning his Waddle Dee friends, setting the first objective. Free them, and on the way, make a true mouthful to control a rundown car, vending machine, ring, arch, and many others, just to name a few. Either way, Kirby made his way through the rundown city, 
and set Alphalin and the first Waddledees free and began to populate the Waddledee town of the Forgotten Land. Our Pink Puffball also spent some time here between vacuum cleaning the land of rundown urban environments taken straight out of The Last of Us, tropical beach sections, and even sections reminiscing those of Dark Souls or Elden Ring. Well, that and putting the members of the Beast Pack in their place, including King Dedede who got possessed again, though this time with a mask. The first time even took Elphilin away so the second time Kirby had to give him a proper whooping to bring him back to his senses. King Dedede then helped Kirby as they were confronted with the information regarding the ultimate life form which the former people had once used for its teleportation properties, but which ended their thriving civilization at least here in the Forgotten Land. A being which the King of the Beast Pack, Leongar the Lion, desired to revive. Naturally, Leongar was defeated by Kirby but too late before the counterpart of Elphilin, Forgo forcefully merged together to form Fecto Elphilus. The ultimate life form which was brought down and with it Elphilin was set free, just in time for another mouthful, a truck, which crashed into what remained of Elphilus, thus creating an opening to close the portal connecting the forgotten land with Planet Popstar. Elphilin thanked Kirby and said goodbye though not for good, as shortly after Kirby returned back in order to restore Leongar, knock Forgo out of him, and secure peace with the Beast Pack. Though not before Morpho Knight was brought down. The butterfly that we have seen flying around Kirby in all his adventures merged together with Soul Forgo. They tried to take down Kirby, but to no avail, setting the stage for one final commemorative photo featuring Kirby and the Beast Pack in Waddle Dee Town before taking down Chaos Elphilus. And that is the Kirby timeline as it stood during its 30th anniversary with the godlike being that is Kirby with the power of the stars, the protector of planet Popstar who might face a far more lethal threat in the future from certain butterflies. <laughs>